Welcome to iPhone 2024 Qatar Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sagan and we're back with AJX. Let's go. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But your return requires two videos and we're recording two videos today. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it's been, a little, it's been a long time since we last recorded together and I'm very excited for it. Okay. Uh, to be fair, yeah, uh, not much, not much racing, but there's definitely a lot of talking points. Yeah, I think those two videos also uh, line long, uh, line well along with each other, as there are some talking points in, in between the races, obviously, and yeah, we're gonna have fun. Okay, Qatar. Uh, yeah, championship sealed. There's just a constructor championship, but uh, at that point, McLaren had a bit of a lead over Ferrari uh, coming to Qatar, and Qatar obviously wasn't the best track for Ferrari on paper. Uh, turned out that they were pretty decent uh, in practices, but as the track got more grip, Ferrari just became slower. And uh, yeah, uh, McLaren, in my opinion, was the quickest car over the entire weekend. But also, only was the quickest car, like straight up quickest car in the um, in the sprints. <laughs> that's the that's the strangest thing. Okay, um, shall we get to the well? Do, there was only one practice session, obviously, uh, with Ferrari being strong. Nothing really much there to, to talk about, right? It was such a weird order that it wasn't representative, really like Bottas in P six or whatever. So. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, we also had Yuki in like P3 or maybe uh, somewhere in, uh, up there as well. And he didn't quite end up uh, in top 10, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, all right, sprint qualifying. Um, damn, this is this is why I don't <laughs> like to record a week after because I, I simply record, uh, simply forget about, uh, about the sprints, like most of what happened because just... Yeah, I guess, uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it was called a Pinto. Also, yeah, the medical car also got the jump start on it. <laughs> yeah, not the greatest second last race of Sergio Perez's career. Uh, potentially, yeah. You summed it up pretty well. Uh, honestly, probably better than I would have. Uh, yeah, you rem reminded me of uh, sprint results uh, themselves. Uh, Hulk can she get a max. Max had a really bad start. Very un uh, uncharacteristic of him. Uh, he recovered that one place off Gasly. Yeah, I, I, I kind of... Also, Lewis had a bad start in the race, but we'll get to that. Um... Yeah, Max had a bad start. Uh, obviously, didn't wasn't like super quick in sprint qualifying either. So he 
we didn't expect him to probably to uh, challenge McLaren's, but I, I expected him to be up there in the top five. He had a bad start, which yeah uh, happens to everyone once in a while, even to Max. Uh, he's not a robot. Um, I mean, he had a pretty much perfect season. Like one bad start doesn't change anything. Uh, obviously, drop, dropped behind the Alpine and has. Uh, I don't know what exactly was uh, that overtake on Gasly because. Gasly seemed like he was just letting Verstappen through, even though he probably could have defended considering uh, the Red Bull space in the sprint. And that was for points as well. Like Alpine are in the constructors' fight with Haas and uh, I think Toro Rosso. So I, at that point, I, it, was, it was confusing for me. Like when Gasly just let that position slide up so easily, especially like uh, in retrospect, uh, Haas was keeping up with Max, and Max just couldn't catch Hulkenberg and overtake him, so... Uh, yeah, uh, interesting uh, interesting sequence there. Uh, the Colpinto uh, perez incident in the pit lane was, was very funny, you summed it up already, and yeah, McLaren uh, with the swap at the end, costing me the second point of, uh, of this uh, prediction, so I mean, I had I had Piastri and Norris uh, changing, but it was the other way around, and oh my god, I, I lost both points. <sighs> I'm also afraid this is probably gonna cost me as well, like, uh, in the end. I, I also, yeah, I called up last race, and I think I may be a little closer to this race as well, um, uh, judging based on the predictions. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly like if Lana was told to swap positions before the race or before the sprint race, but it was a very respectable move. My opinion, uh, was a payback for Brazil as well. I just, I, I felt like, yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, uh, it's just, yeah, sprints are worthless anyway. It's just a couple of points. Those sprint wins don't mean much. Um, they just can't, can't do that. Apparently, in F1, uh, just letting the other drive or driver win because it's a sprint and doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, managed it well, managed it better than in Brazil, definitely. Um, and yeah, pretty much a boring sprint, as you said. Um, okay. Uh, Grand Prix, uh, also in qualifying, was uh, a different story compared to the sprint. Uh, Red Bull found some incredible pace got Sergio Perez to the Q3. I think that's even more impressive than Max getting pulled <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah, they... Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just made some crucial set of changes and Max was just rapid straight away um, and got pole positioned by... It was actually pretty close in the end, I think, uh, with George. Um, but obviously, Max got that very, very strange penalty that to, to this point I am very confused about because I, I, I think I've never seen it before. Not necessarily agree with it either. I think, I think it was like they were both not on the push lab. I just I, I, I didn't quite get it. Um, but it's FIA, FIA pretty much RNG this weekend as <laughs> yet again. So, uh, do you have a different opinion on it, or should I continue? Oh, oh dear! You guys should get a point for Russell because uh, we count we we count them before the penalty. So, oh my God! Oh no! I just realized that now. <laughs> Should have been quiet. <laughs> oh damn! Uh, yeah, good job, HX, <laughs> for the first point of the Qatar Grand Prix predictions. Um, then, then we had the McLarens. Um, 
I think Norris ahead of Piastri. They looked very quick, but not quite on the level of Max and George. Um, we knew McLaren would be quicker in the Grand Prix as they've been in the most scenarios uh, in the last few races. Okay, go on. Oh, for uh, for the predictions uh, for Abu Dhabi uh, with all the news. Do you want to include the the entire thing that happened between them in this video or in another? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty much what I said. Yeah, I just a very strange penalty that I I, I don't. Oh, you mean you, you think you should be harsher? I uh, yeah, one place was a very strange decision. Decision. Uh, I don't agree with the free plus either. I think it should have been reprimand at, at worst. Um, just yeah, yeah. I felt. Yeah, it also almost felt like it almost felt like they just made it on the spot. Like the the, the rule of or whatever the penalty just it didn't exist before, in my opinion. It just they just went with it to have some of some sort of punishment for Max for a very mild incident. I just I just it's just strange. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I mean, I, MBS, let's say all this like that, is very con controversial figure in the FIA, the president. Yeah. I I don't think they're going to sort it out anytime soon. Like, we, we've had this problem with FIA since, like, 2020. Like, it's it's been for... Like, 2021 was the, was the season when it really went over the limit that just shouldn't have happened. And then even this season or even the past season, like you can name a few incidents with the FI being absolutely incompetent in the last uh, few years, basically ever since 2020, just, I don't know. To be fair, I refer to every single sport today, probably, <laughs> probably sucks. So. Uh, there was the fatal kind of, kind of the victory with Hamilton hurting it, but it also, yeah, that was that was that way more logical than this penalty, for example. Yeah. All right, uh, P4, P3, where McLaren's and P5, uh, Charles, right? It wasn't Hamilton, or was it? No, it wasn't Hamilton, because he got, like, P7 or P6. Carlos, maybe? Charles, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, Hamilton had a really bad qualifying for the second time in a row. Uh, well, or maybe it's a third. We're actually fourth because yeah, USA, Brazil, Vegas, and here again. Uh, it's such a such a such a sad seeing Lewis struggle so much towards this end of this Mercedes stint. It's just I really uh, like the drive that I win, I want to win the most out of the realistic op options is definitely Lewis. I think my second is probably Carlos. Um, those two I think deserve to win in their final race for their teams, especially Lewis. I think it would be very memorable, but not quite happening uh, in the current form of Mercedes and Lewis. Uh, yeah, I may never sit on the podium. I mean, I may, may never stand on the podium again. So that's that's the yeah. Um, Um, okay, to the Grand Prix, the the race, which was, uh, yeah, uh, the another FIA shit show basically, uh, just all around. Uh, why, why is it always FIA screwing up races that make the races anywhere near interesting? Because this race was such a stinker before the FIA chaos, and I I don't want to see. The FIA chaos being the only thing exciting about a Grand Prix. I want to see racing, and this race didn't have racing. There's a couple of overtakes, uh, and that's about it. Like, yeah, one DRS straight, which didn't even produce many overtakes. Uh, just, uh, I think this track should ju just go straight off the calendar as soon as possible. I, I think there's building the the track for 2026 or maybe 2027. Not quite sure, but. Oh my god, just don't hold sprints here. It's already a bad enough of a track for a Grand Prix, but they had a sprint here as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's just just money Grand Prix at this point. Uh, there's all the Qatar, like, no, no one cares about Qatar outside of Qatar. <laughs> like, let's be real, like, uh, most people watching F1 probably didn't knew Qatar existed before this Grand Prix uh, was in the calendar. And for a good reason, because this uh, country is very irrelevant and not quite, uh, well, uh, good in its uh, human rights standards. Uh, so, yeah, I just, yeah, exactly, like, that's the football, uh, the football, I think it was World Cup five years ago, right? Or was it four? No, this, yeah, there was a, there was the, there was the Euro this year. So it was, it has to be six years, right? Two? Oh, sorry. Um, already in the future, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, two years ago, uh, there was, there was a lot of controversies with how many people died during the, during the preparation for the World Cup in Qatar, and just uh, th th this country shouldn't be anywhere near sport, in my opinion. Just, just all, it's all just oil money, and I, I don't think this track. I, I, even if they build a new track, I just don't think that they should race here. Honestly, there are so many b good F one tracks that could p produce some good racing for some good money as well. Like I think fans would appreciate some good tracks back on the calendar. Um, I mean, there's a lot of funds from Germany, for example. They don't have a German Grand Prix. Uh, South, yeah, South Africa is also a good shout. We have obviously Malaysia, Turkey, uh, even Argentina is being uh, considered thanks to Colin Pinto. Uh, just not these Middle Eastern tracks that are they absolutely suck. Like even Jeddah, just get that off the calendar. I don't care. It's the fastest. Tree circuit, it just it just sucks ass, and it, there, there's there's one thing about the Jeddah street circuit in Saudi Arabia that it's just one big incident waiting to happen. Like every time you, I I see racing there, they're just have, imagine a, a a puncture 
in the middle of those high-speed chicanes. The car going slowly, and there can be a really bad accident that can end badly. I just, this is such a... Uh, oh my god, I've been ranting about meat laced circuits. Just, I hate them all. Bra Bahrain is alright, but that's about it. Uh, one is enough. I uh, don't need Abu Dhabi either. I think it's just... Uh, I hate them all so much. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's a Grand Prix. Uh, Max Verstappen uh, getting the lead in turn one. Never looked back. Uh, held his place uh, at every restart. So, yeah, good for him. Um, no one could challenge Max that race. Uh, Lando was close at times, uh, but eventually fell down the order thanks to uh, FIA. Uh, I, I'm not saying a penalty because it's FIA, and uh, we'll get to, that, get to that obviously as well. P2, in the end, Charles Leclerc somehow getting a P2. Don't know how. He, I haven't seen him the entire race. <laughs> he just, <laughs> just got the P2 somehow. Uh, yeah, out of nowhere. Uh, P3, PS3, also uh, invisible the entire race. Just uh... Yeah, PS3 had some good moments in the middle of the season, but the start and the, and the end there's a, there's a couple of races have been really, really tough for PS3. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll see obviously next year if he steps up even more and can challenge Lando for uh, the number one spot in McLaren. It's currently Lando is the logically the driver being prioritized things of the championship. Obviously, the championship is over, but that's that was a couple of races ago. Um, Yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. I remember that. Yeah, for, for, yeah, me too. He's my second favorite driver uh, currently. So. Yeah. May hap may happen to be like that. Like it's very close between Charles and Lando, like eight points I think. Um Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um before George Russell not finishing on the podium after starting for pole position. George didn't really have a good race. He also was screwed up by the safety car thing in the middle of the race. He pitted early and then the safety car happened. Uh, which kind of hindered his race, but also the start was really bad. He got overtaken by both Max and Lando at the start. I mean, if you're going to back the FI to give you the pole position, then you're going to screw it up by turn one. I, I, mean, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. George, uh, you've been beating Lewis, but... <laughs> Uh, don't even let, don't even get me started on Lewis's race. <laughs> That's also a talking point. Okay. Wanna mention also P5 Gasly. Uh, just, yeah, Gasly P5. That's, that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the comment. Uh, Yeah, then, then it puts in P3 in Vegas and then P5 in, in Qatar, like, or P3 in, uh, sorry, P3 in qualifying in Vegas. So it wasn't the, was a DF at the ENF because it's Alpine after all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Gasly is putting some exceptional performances in their last few races, just very consistent and very quick. Um, it puts up the question, uh, what is happening to Ocon and is he really, uh, 
not being given equal treatment uh, as well. Obviously, now now it's even more apparent because obviously <laughs> Ocon is dropped for Abu Dhabi, which is also one big news. Um, we'll talk about that for the Abu Dhabi predictions, I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I I'm I'm sure I wanted to. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, let's go through the order. P6, uh, Carlos Sainz, right? Um, then it's P7, P7, who's P7? Uh, was it, was it Alonso? Yeah, I think it was Alonso in P7, because P8 was Joe. That is also a, <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. It's jo in joints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mazepin and Schumacher. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. They also scored points in the last year's Qatar Grand Prix, so it seems like this track is some some sort of a good luck charm for them. Um, don't want to see the only points uh, from them coming twenty twenty five from Hulkenberg in Qatar. I think I would uh, be uh, pretty sad if there that, that was the only points uh, points being raised. But it's looking like this could be twenty twenty five could be another year of Sauber struggle. Uh, I really hope they get rid of the, the current uh, sponsor that I don't want to even mention because I'm just disgusted by both the sponsors on that uh, Sauber car. Um, yeah, I... Okay, uh, <laughs> let's continue. PA, PA Joe, imp beyond impressive, very good. Uh, we're all happy, I think, for him. I, he just, a driver you know is not going to get another F1 opportunity unless it's... Uh, it's like a FP1 or whatever, like uh, as, a, as a reserve driver or whatever. So, so yeah, um, P9, uh, P9, who was Magnussen or yeah, Magnussen was P9 and P10 was uh, Lana Norris with the fastest lap. So I get the point. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's what it was. Let's go. Yeah, I just didn't quite have a McLaren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't much of a store. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yeah, it was... There are so many things going against Lewis's race. Uh, it's just I don't even know if it's entirely on him. I just I would I just would say it's a really bad weekend for both Mercedes and Lewis. Uh, like that side of the garage, mostly. Just mm. Lewis didn't put the put the lap together in qualifying and in the race. Just this this team wasn't. I mean, He's telling the team that he's got really bad tires. That they're he's struggling, right? There is it's on, it's on the Qatar track, which is famous for random punctures, even on a Mercedes car. He's just leaving him out there uh, for God knows how long. And yeah, him and Science, yeah, getting punctures thanks to the entire mirror saga, which is also a huge talking point. Uh, but. I'll quickly mention the, uh, the rest of the race, uh, sorry, the rest of the finishing order. P11, Valtteri Bottas. So close to points. Unfortunately, there was a really quick McLaren going through the field. Very sad for him to not get points this year, but yeah. Uh, really, I hope there's a really, really slim chance but that he may end up in the Red Bull next year. I would love to see it, but it's probably not going to happen. That's wishful thinking. But you know, never, never, you never know. Uh, Perez was also picked up by Red Bull uh, at the after the season ended. So 
Maybe we'll we'll happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, P12. Uh, I think Colapinto. No, wasn't. Was it Colapinto or I think I, I know the last two finishes were lost in Sonoda. I think Lewis had to be P13, so Colapinto P12. Um, very forgettable race for him. Uh, overall, weekend was slower than Albin, and just yeah. Yeah, it was a it was one of those weekends where Colapito just wasn't wow with the car on this track, um, and yeah, that was the second last race in F one for at least a season as he's not getting a seat for next year. It's been pretty much confirmed that all the teams have uh, pretty much uh, lowered their interest in him after his slump in the performance. So yeah, it, it's a shame, but I mean, he oh, still uh, judging. Based on what he achieved so far overall, I think still being a pretty good performance, uh, something in for Logan Sargent. Um, yeah, uh, it probably will get a seat for next year. Uh, sorry, not next year, uh, the 2026 season. Uh, where that might be, I don't know, but we'll see next, next year. Obviously, uh, at this time last year, we didn't know what would happen in the silly season this year, and a lot has happened. <laughs> a lot <laughs> has happened. Uh, in the still a season this year, so yeah, okay. Uh, that's the racing race order. So, uh, we mentioned the start, we mentioned what's the, the punctures. I briefly mentioned that. Okay, we can get to the if I should show, uh, starting with um, started with obviously the penalty with my with Max's penalty was already mentioned. Let's get to the mirror thingy. Alban going down the main street, uh, his mirror flew off. I don't even know if a uh, car is allowed to finish uh, without a mirror, but apparently it is, even though it's dangerous as hell. Uh, I guess we're left to race without mirrors. Uh, weird. Anyways, the mirror left out uh, in the middle of the back straight, obviously, start finish straight, sorry. Um, towards the breaking point, so also it's the, it's the place where people either overtake or let people through as... That was the one thing that happened. Uh, Bottas was letting through uh, some, uh, well, people who were blue flagging him. He ran over a mirror and uh, destroyed it uh, to pieces. Uh, very dangerous pieces full of carbon fiber and uh, glass. Very, not, not very good for tires. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> classic FIA just not, not, not knowing what to do. There are a couple of uh, red, yellow flags, green flags. It was flashing over the place. If I didn't know what happened, uh, what should what should happen? What to do? Uh, they didn't want didn't want to stop the race. Simplest solution: throw uh, throw a virtual safety car and let them pass through the pit lane. Problem solved. But they did not. They let it explode on the track, causing two punctures. Uh, well, probably causing two punctures. It wasn't confirmed. It was to them, but it was such a huge coincidence that. Uh, both Sainz and Carlos, uh, sorry, <laughs> Sainz and Carlos, uh, Carlos and Lewis both had punctures, uh, right after it exploded, uh, in sector one as well. So, <sighs> I could, I could rant about the FIA all day long, but it just it wasn't a huge bad decision. Uh, they just went with it then. It was the entire thing. They didn't know whether to throw a virtual safety car after that or what to do. Uh, there were some blue green flags thrown all over the place. And one of the victims of that was Lana Norris, uh, who apparently didn't lift uh, through a double yellow, which was there for like three seconds um, in, a, in an angle, which he was almost not meant to see, uh, like not able to see at that point. And getting a penalty for a double yellows is uh, pretty much always a uh, drive through, uh, stop and go. That's I, I'm not arguing about against that. I'm arguing about the FIA not knowing where to put on a, red, a yellow flag. Uh, well, basically, a virtual safety car or a safety car in the uh, which it was in the end, it was a safety car, uh, based on the explosion of the mirror. Um, which FIA undecisive, uh, indecisive, sorry, threw off Lando's race to the bin. Um, basically the penalty, I, I, at that point, I, I thought that he wouldn't even make it to the points. He made it to the P10 with the fastest lap in the end. So it wasn't 
that catastrophic for the constructors, but it was a big swing for Ferrari on a track that was supposed to be huge for McLaren. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there's also the penalty for Lewis. Uh, I think that was pretty much served at that point. Lewis wasn't like, he wasn't trying at that point. He just, he, he knew the race was over. He wasn't too, like, get on with it, just got to the last race and end the Mercedes stint. Uh, it really looked like he just didn't want to race there anymore uh, uh, on that circuit at that point. Uh, yeah, Lewis wanted to retire the car then. Uh, Mercedes told him not to. Two laps later, <laughs> they told him to retire the car and Lewis didn't. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, that, that beam, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it just yeah, both of them saying no to the to the order of the other. <sighs> not, not the greatest look for for Lewis uh, and the team at the end of the season. I just I didn't really want to see some good Mercedes pace and good uh, Lewis performance to, towards the end of the season, so they can end on the high. But it seems like this not going to happen. Mercedes want him to get out of that car pretty quickly. It seems like I just. He won six driver's championships for that. Uh, well, seven if you are really <laughs> that. <laughs> um, okay, six based on stats, seven based on winning the titles. Let's say it like that. You're still there? <laughs> yeah. um, and the treatment they gave Lewis this season, it's so... So uh, it, I don't even know if there's a word for it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really disgusted by it. I just, why, why are they treating their driver? They, they, he's raced there for eleven seasons, uh, his entire career with Mercedes, basically. That's uh, so sad to see. Yeah, it's it's pretty much on Mercedes. Like they didn't Lewis wanted to extend with Mercedes for a couple of years and Mercedes like this is a this is a statement by I think uh some uh some uh, F1 pundit that Mercedes didn't want to commit to Lewis for another few seasons. They only were able to give him a one plus one deal, and Lewis wanted to well, wanted to have a multi-year deal, and it felt like Mercedes were not um, counting uh, with him for for the future, basically. And he just went with Ferrari because he always wanted to go there. They were able to give him uh, a pretty good contract. Uh, very yeah 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 it's just it's just logical thing at that point yeah you didn't want to commit to this driver and he bails on you that's on you i i just why why are you why are you treating your driver your most successful driver by far this badly this season i just, i'm just i'm just confused i don't know Yeah, I, I, f I think Antonelli is going to be uh, similar to PS3 compared to Norris in his first season. Maybe a little bit worse. I don't expect him to be anywhere near George. Uh, so, yeah, I imagine they have actually a, a race winning car, maybe not a championship winning car, and George is there with not a without a driver to basically have his back like i think if they would have kept lewis they could have fought for both championships next year but may happen that they will get none next year with a uh, very good car because uh, i still i still feel like if you if, if i'm having lewis and george as teammates fighting for a title i'm i probably will would pick lewis over george even after uh, the slump in performance from Lewis. Uh, uh,
Yeah, I, I also, I also like George. Uh, it's like one of my uh, six favorite drivers. Uh, probably my top six. So I also like George, but I just, I feel, feel like he mid. Yeah, it's Lewis Hamilton. It's you cannot compare yourself to Lewis Hamilton. Basically, when it comes to fighting for a championship, like, <laughs> yeah, he he was like okay, uh, two thousand and eight was uh, sorry, two thousand seven. He missed the championship by one point. Uh, two thousand and eight, he won the championship. Two thousand and nine was a really bad year for McLaren, but he ended up winning, uh, I think, a, a race in Hungary. 2010, good car, but over the entire season wasn't as consistent as the Red Bulls and uh, and Ferraris. 2011, extremely quick car, but very, extremely, very unreliable. Um, if the re reliability was there, he probably would have won the title uh, or maybe have fought Lewis, uh, sorry, have fought uh, Sebastian Vettel as, at least, because when it comes to qualifying in 2011, uh, Lewis was up there with, with Seb. I think it's they're, they're pretty much neck to neck. Um, 2012, uh, similar story, but I think uh, Claren wasn't, uh, again, wasn't reliable enough. Um, and 2013, then we had the Mercedes year of, of transition to the new Rex. Uh, he still won a Grand Prix in 2013. Then, then we have the. Oh wait, it's it uh, three? Sorry, two-year championship winning streak. Then it's Nico Rosberg beating him by a little bit, uh, thanks to. Well, uh, thanks to many, many, uh, many aspects and many things. But basically, he was very close to winning a title. And then it's four back-to-back -back titles with twenty twenty-one, obviously ending as it as it did. What it, what it says what it says is basically Lewis with a little bit more luck could have been a ten time world champion, and I uh, you're pitting this caliber of a driver against a driver with three race wins, and as much as George has been the better driver this season, I still would cut with Lewis. It was a pretty probably a bit of a <laughs> extended explanation, but I just. Uh, well, I have to explain myself a little bit. Uh, okay, well, let's continue with the reaction because we're already <laughs> quite we got uh, been quite through quite a few rants. So, <laughs> okay, least impressive team, not Red Bull, uh, and not Haas either because uh, Hulkenberg got it points in the sprint. Although he was he was really weak in the Grand Prix, uh, and he also like yeah. Uh, it was it probably was mechanical issue because he was really far back, far off back, Magnussen uh, in the qualifying compared to spring qualifying, which was the opposite scenario. So it probably was a setup change that didn't suit the Haas um, of Hulkenberg. Um, Red Bull, Toro Rosso, Toro Rosso. Yeah, <laughs> that was what I had in mind as well. Uh, McLaren definitely not, even though I think they were they were more screwed up by by the FIA. Uh, they still got one two in the sprint. Uh, definitely not them. Mercedes were quicker than we than I personally expected them to be this weekend. So they're definitely not. Uh, Red Bull was the max one the Grand Prix has uh, points in the sprint. Sauber probably their best weekend uh, since China uh, this year. Aston Martin. Alonso scored points. I think that's or just speaking for itself. Ferrari, Ferrari had a good weekend uh, considering their pace. Williams, I think Williams could be um, one of the teams that you could mention for the least impressive. But Toro Rosso probably was uh, was a team with more expectations than Alpine. Obviously, Gasly doing wonders uh, in that car. So yeah, Toro Rosso takes it. Least impressive driver. Do you have an argument against my Colapinto pick? Because I'm I'm pretty confident behind it. Uh, do you have a driver who was less uh, like uh, in, less impressed or actually, like worse than Colapinto compared to expectations? <laughs> we 
<laughs> he got Q3. Yeah, I have to admit it. He was... Okay, okay. Uh, let's go pair call up into to Sergio Perez in terms of expectations. I, I think I think they should have pretty much finished next to each other based on the expectations we have on them. Uh, Perez... Cool. Perez uh, DNF'd in the race call of uh, going to Q3. In the sprint, got on a Q1. Yeah, uh, Perez... I think that Q3 pretty much saved Perez from the least impressive driver, maybe. But he's been having so many bad weekends in the road that at this point, like, outing Q1 for Perez is pretty much the norm. Uh, Q3 actually is, like, getting Q4 a bit of sour. <laughs> like, it's, it's almost that just... And there were there were embarrassing moments. Yeah. <laughs> there were so many bad press weekends that it just it's this see this seems like the completely average press weekend. That's the problem. Like I can't remember a good press weekend. Uh like ever <laughs> at, at this season especially like, after Miami or what was it uh... I think there are worse weekends for Perez this season he DNF himself in a couple of races this season <laughs> I know how it sounds, but that's the average Perez weekend this season. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just not giving uh, Perez the least impressive driver. I just, I'm just not. The audience would pick Perez for every single weekend this season, but that's not how we go. But we get, it's based on expectation. It's uh, impressiveness, and we are not expecting Perez to be any, anywhere near impressive. Do you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's what I'm talking about. Just he, he had so many bad races that at this point, a bad race is is the norm. It's the standard. I just I just cannot give him the least impressive team because honestly, I had zero, like less than zero expectations. I I thought he would have had a bad weekend, and it was a bad weekend. It's just yeah, go. I think this was mainly because, because Perez. Uh, th this was based on Perez's memorable moments, like the star in the sprint and uh, the the safety car DNF. Okay. Uh, as the the closest I'm gonna get to getting Perez the least impressive driver if he's getting tied with Colopinto. <laughs> I already lost science point in uh, in Spa and. Uh, I remember that well. I'm just not going to go against myself, especially now that I'm confident behind my decision for Colo Pinto because he was he was nowhere this weekend. He was outpaced by Alban by a mile. And it wasn't it wasn't even close. He was he was it was uh, what's probably hindering me the most is Alban having that bad luck for the weekend uh even with a mirror thing in the race like already had damage before that and it's just <laughs> mirror flew off like that's so unlucky uh i don't even know he probably dnf in the end uh because he he cannot finish with the one mirror right uh and i uh, so he finished I might be retired on the last, uh, the second last lap, and that's why it's said. 
Ocon is also a good shot, but I think that's more an Alpine, uh, not quite treating their drivers uh, e equally. Uh, but you also want to mention that uh, after uh, later, basically. Um, all right, uh, all right. Are you not allowing my point for Colpinto? Uh, You can't say I wish for it because you have to say that. I have to say that he's been at least on the level of Perez. In my opinion, Perez was. <sighs> Colapinto got. I think in a in bow uh, and crash in a sprint, DNF uh, with Ocon entirely uh entire color painters fault by the way as well. Um in the race and uh, qualifying was like seven tenths behind Alban in qualifying. Seven tenths, that's Perez territory. Uh but uh, considering it's uh it's uh based on expectations you have Color Pinto compared to Alban, he's been very close to Galvan. Uh, in their time as teammates, um, I just uh, okay. All right, I, I'll take this as as a payback for uh, sorry, another payback, a, a payment, re repayment for for uh, for spa. Uh, that was a very sad weekend for me uh, in terms of points. Because I got screwed up by uh, not just uh, just F one gods, but also uh, my colleague. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, sorry, I probably that was probably harsh, but yeah, you, you know it's a banter, right? All right. Uh, most impressive team. I I can also call you my uh, what is it? Is there another word for colleague like until the podcast? Like, no, that's that's too bad. Do you, that's true. That's, uh, I don't know. Co-host, yeah, that's the word I wanted to. Thank you, thank you, co-host. Okay, uh, most impressive team. Um, Sauber. Sauber. <laughs> Yeah, it has to be sober because getting points uh, for the first time this this season. Uh, both drivers capable of points, but obviously Bottas uh, was was screwed up. Uh, I don't know if you've read uh, his statement on the Grand Prix, but it was uh, pretty much saying uh, Sauber sacrificed Bottas for Joe sure to have points in this race. That's basically what happened, and. Uh, not the greatest decision, probably, but or the better, they scored points, and that's the most important thing for them, I guess. Um, most impressive driver, I think I can get it for Gasly, right? Uh, Joe also good, but Gasly was exceptional for the entire weekend. There was not 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 much you can say bad about Gasly, apart from letting uh, not letting like uh, just not fighting for something in the sprint. But that's such a minor thing. Like, apart from that, like P five in an Alpine uh, on pure pace as well. Uh, he defended Carlos for uh, God knows how long. It was it was like thirty laps, maybe or just very long time. Gasly, very good, very good race, just very good entire weekend. Um, I'm glad I take any point here. I just yeah. Um, uh, Lewis Hamilton, not quite. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. Uh, Extra bowl predictions. McLaren constructors, no. Uh, they didn't quite manage to have a clean race. They, would they actually, I think they, 18 points plus 20. Yeah, that's 39. No, no, no. Uh, there's 44 points up for grabs. So they would be like five points away from winning. They would need to, they would need Lando to win the Grand Prix, basically, for the constructors. Also, yeah, probably Lando being in P two would 
uh, put Charles and Carlos lower, so that's five points minus. But I think there will still be like one or zero points, like exactly on the limit that Perez still can win the title, uh, technically, mathematically. Free car crash. Uh, don't remember any. They do. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, it, it feels like there was, but it was just punctures and and Perez in the gravel <laughs> and mechanical DNFs also. So yeah. Um, okay. Three to one. Very hard for points, uh, but I think we're tied for Abu Dhabi but based on my head calculations. I may be wrong by a couple of points. Uh, at most, but I think it's very close coming to coming to Abu Dhabi. Um, yeah, championship. We're gonna know the results after Abu Dhabi. I'm gonna count all the points and have them prepared for the last reaction of the season for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Now for this video, I think we're over. Uh, we're gonna go through a lot of talking points for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix itself, uh, especially the video. Yeah. The changes that happened, or the the news that happened, or the drama that happened between the Grand Prix. So stay tuned for that, and we're gonna end it right here. Thanks everyone who's been listening to us, uh, mostly ranting, but at least I, I hope it was a little bit of entertainment there as well. <laughs> I mean, ranting is probably entertaining for the viewers, I guess. <laughs> as, at least it's for me most of the time. Anyway, so. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.